place is awesome, man. Yeah. What's up, everybody? Here I am in Springfield, Massachusetts, hanging out with my good friend, Dan Jaworski. Jaworski, right? Yeah, Jaworski. All right. Jaworski. Go Polska. Hey, Dan, how'd you get into juggling? <laughs> it was actually started off as a hobby. Yeah, I just kind of passed the time, but right now I kind of use it as a way to solve puzzles like kind of mind puzzles. And I think it's important for everybody to work on at least like one complex thing per day to engage in like deep thinking because it really like ends up bleeding over into other parts of your life. And you know, it's, it's all about stimulating one's creativity to make new things and in some small way better the world. So you got some really cool three ball videos. Where's this whole uh, inspiration coming from? I think the inspiration comes from um, using older components from previous patterns and then end up stitching them together in a different way. So it's like you create minor variations that encourage all these like strange permutations that end up coming out. I sort of see it as like a potter sitting at like a, a sculpting wheel. And in some ways, like when I juggle, the patterns end up evolving mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. And then I have to kind of reel them back and start to control them a little bit more. But it starts as, as methodical and then can like morph and warp in different ways, depending on you know the type of music I'm listening to, the, the mood I'm in, if I'm in a good mood, if I'm in a bad mood. Everybody goes through days, especially as like a juggler, but being able to channel that growth mindset into new things will only better your juggling in the long run. You wow. get like exponential return. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. How long have you been juggling? About 17 years. Wow, man. And what's your purpose of why you juggle? I think my purpose is everybody wants to find some way to stamp their legacy into history. And I think with juggling, it's such a niche um, hobby. It was really easy to get into and it's such a small supportive community that you end up wanting to better that because you know you can. I think sometimes people engage in things in life and they don't think that they can make a huge change. But in juggling, because it's such a small world, you can make an impact and can leave a groove. And when I came onto the scene, I discovered all these amazing, innovative uh, jugglers. Right. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the three ball craziness. Yeah. So, so these are, it's a mathematical pattern. It's uh, so people that don't know, or what is these side swipes, these mathematical patterns that you guys are doing now? It's like you guys are scientists. You guys are mathematicians sure. out there and it's creating more and more patterns. So side swap is, it's kind of like the language of juggling. It's a notation that um, in the same way a musician would use um, musical notes um, in sequence, jugglers use a string of numbers to remember how many times the balls are moving between the hands um, and how many beats it takes to get back to um, certain hands once it's thrown. Um, I don't generally use a lot of sight swap in my like personal development. I tend to think about juggling patterns in the form of like geometries and angles, 30 degrees, 40 degrees. And when I'm constructing a pattern, I'll sort of visualize it in slow motion, you know, encourage time dilation visually. And I'll look at um, sort of like a, a wall or something like that and create a graph and the balls will move about that graph. And once I've run the simulation of my brain many times, I practice it generally like over a bed so it's easier to pick up the balls. And then once I have it down to maybe three or four cycles continuously, um, I'll flip around and go away from the bed and practice over just like a, a floor. And I think like adding that fear element of dropping on the floor makes you more solid faster. And I tend to like uh, record all the stuff that I do. Right, and, okay. And, cool. with re and with recording you get sort of like an instant um, feedback. So any error that you make, you can go back and like instantaneously correct it. So it puts the, the short term gains into like a long term type of memory. So, wow. you, you know, it works later on easier. So you feel like this has become research for you in a way? Yeah, yeah. I see it in the same way as mathematicians trying to research maybe prime numbers or um, physicists trying to figure out um, the fundamental laws of the universe. But what I'm gonna, I'm doing is, I'm doing it like within a very specialized niche. Um, there's a really great uh, Chinese 
uh, fictional. It's like a sci-fi novel. Okay. And, and it's cool. called and it's and it's called the three body um, three body problem. And in physics, when you have like two take for instance like two objects, um, they're if they're gravitationally attracted, it's very easy to predict where they're going to go because they'll sort of gravitate around each other. But when you introduce a third ball uh, or a third object you add chaos so the patterns become highly unpredictable and I guess in, in a lot of ways like with my juggling I want to find the most efficient way to move the balls in geometric ways that reflect uh, symmetry and um, just like obscure patterns weird throw angles I work a lot with these things called active twos where the ball is thrown and actually caught by the same hand in the same throw and uh, it's sort of like a it's a weird type of movement and can be taxing on the muscles but it's definitely worth the visual effect because I mean we were talking before uh, being a juggler is kind of like being a magician you create an optical illusion in front of your audience you're not tricking gravity I mean the fundamental laws of the universe you can't change right right but what you are doing is you are creating an air of mystery and suspense and uh, it's composing with your hands as opposed to yeah. composing with an instrument or with your voice. Yeah, it's definitely like a visual music. And it's cool to see, I've seen some of your videos where you wear all black and you can see the white balls and do all these cool patterns. I mean, this has been a huge evolution in juggling in a way where things have gotten uh, pretty insane in Japan and all over the world where three balls on how to create new different patterns and variations has been this kind of hype now. And you're definitely one of the scenes of, of uh, making that kind of three ball posse happen. You know, lots of guys out there are really just saying, you know what, there's performing, but there's also this math and science into juggling where you can just take it to a whole different level. Yeah, I think for me, I was I was really inspired by uh, Subasa Murakami. Who... Subasa Murakami, okay. Yeah. What's this guy's deal? Like, I heard he lives on a hill and he, he like pretty much, you know, drinks his tea and then just goes and does all these crazy juggling and comes to these festivals from time to time. Yeah, I, I, I just kind of heard through the grapevine at the IJA that, you know, he would, he's not very um, prominent in the juggling scene, but when he does come on the scene yeah. for championships and no and one knows, right, about him as much, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't personally know him. Um, I believe, does his own thing. Yeah. Wow. That's so cool, man. And he's like crazy good, right? He, he is. He doesn't drop. He does all these, you know, amazing, you know, variations that can be super hard, but look so, uh, you know, efficient for him and, re and relaxed. He's, his, his face is just like stone cold and he's doing all these crazy tricks. And he runs these variations for, man, you can see it. He's doing the same thing over and over and over. Yeah. So for him is this, this mathematical, you know, uh, equation of juggling. It's sort of in the same way I do my regression with my pattern. Okay. So you, know, you start with one sequence or component and you're slowly adding on to like increase the complexity or you might invert the throw or change it upside down or change the tempo. But what he does is like, he does it all at once and he, he moves so fluidly and so fast and his, his lines are crisp and uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you've never checked out Tsubasa Murakami, I would highly recommend watching every right. single thing that you know, he's created. Yes. Besides juggling, it seems like you're really into science and math and so forth. Uh, what other things do you like? That I know you do teaching as well, correct? Yeah, I teach science and math, and um, I really like to go out and hike. I think being around in nature, you, you can see the laws of nature realized in front of your eyes. And cool. a lot of times I'll, yep. I'll seek inspiration when I'm hiking a mountain or just being, right on. being on top of something where you can see really really far it just gives you perspective about your own life we're gonna check out this uh hiking spot eventually but man this area has a lot of great nature for sure it definitely does and and i would say that the pioneer valley in general it draws not only you know people who are interested in nature but also people who are interested in art in music and live performance it's a sort of a cultural melting pot cool and I've been living here for a while now, um, mm -hmm. and I really, um, I think, I think everybody, if they get a chance, should come to the Pioneer Valley. I mean, we get travelers from all over the country and sometimes mm -hmm. even all over the world just to look at um, our foliage. 
in the fall. Well, the IJA came here, and what do you think? It's been your first fest. What's it been like? Oh my goodness. Being around such like-minded people, you, you're not just drawing from your own experiences, but you're drawing from a, a constellation of experiences. And just like being able to rub elbows next to somebody who has so much experience or maybe is researching something that you couldn't really wrap your brain around beforehand and now you can, that is is amazing. Like I had to meet um, Andrew Olson, who's like one of the best three ball jugglers that I know, and has produced like hundreds, if not thousands, of videos of, of content. Cool. Uh, Dan Barron, the yep. the three yep. ball wizard. Um, yep. I got to meet Mike Moore, who yep. who is has like the fastest hands ever, and you know they they all work together to create stuff that by you know in, in my research has never been explored cool. may, maybe even in in history i feel like you guys are all geniuses you guys <laughs> have this way of thinking towards you know math and science and then you put them into juggling i think that's awesome i appreciate that yeah man you do music you've done singing and so forth yeah talk I, about that i was in uh i was in an acapella group when i was in college cool and uh, recorded a couple cds and so you, you sing uh, a lot of different stuff what else can you do um, well, I, I do some beatboxing. Get out of here. All right, listen. I'm going to go ahead and lay down a beat, throw down some stuff. We'll see how it goes. You want to try it? <laughs> sure. All right. I've got a transpite number of rhymes intricately designed, intended to be unleashed one at a time. Archaeologists counted me as part of the fine. It's amazing how you can't dismiss apart from the time. But as you approach the velocity, you see the time gets slow. The farther you look, the further back in time you go. Across the board, everything is nominal. Created cause of cause and effect fall like dominoes. These are the questions and the riddles that are yearning me to look up at these stars and stare into eternity. Yeah. I'm just looking for the final equation, that's all, and I'll be unsatisfied. Yeah. And, 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 and purposes, that is not mine. This is a, a rapper wow. who's a physicist. His name's Great and Square. Props goes to him. I, I actually Dude, memorized. that was awesome, I, man. I, I, I thank you. I uh, I, <laughs> I I memorized that for my physics classes yeah. because I I like to make science relatable and I think hip hop has a really great way of like channeling emotion. That's what I'm talking and about. It's like lyrical I feel it. insanity. Very cool. Yeah, Putting music and teaching together. Then you can do juggling together, right? Yeah. Have you cool. tried some beatboxing and juggling as well? Uh, a little bit. Not a lot, but I definitely like to get into, like, you know, sort of fusing together LED um, juggling balls nice. with, with beatboxing and like looping That's pedal, be dope, like man. Yeah. visualization totally. technology. Totally, that would be dope for sure. Just with the lights and the beatboxing and juggling with the variations that you have, that's gonna look wild. What has juggling given back to you? Juggling gives me a sense of community and it gives me a day-to-day -day challenge because you want to stay sharp and when you stop doing things that challenge your mind that you know cause those like brain neurons to flex you i don't know you're not growing anymore and i think the point of life is just to get better every day even if you're pedaling backwards at the same time it's like you constantly are trying to mm -hmm, move forward mm -hmm. that's what juggling gives me and it's a way to create something that is not only technically um interesting but it's beautiful. Right. It's it's in the same way a mathematician would look at a series of equations and maybe see relationships between numbers and constants. But at the end of the day, it's about um, finding relationships. Mm -hmm. And that's what juggling does, is you are trying to find the most beautiful way that the balls can relate in space-time um, for as long as it's juggling. And because it's ephemeral and it doesn't last forever, it's... Uh, it's that's what makes it beautiful kind of like flowers flowers aren't around for forever but because they are not static it makes them have more meaning you know it's uh, right life is finite so you yeah. have to appreciate it when you have it that's awesome that's a beautiful thing hey, man. Hey, man. thank you very much for sharing that check him out dan you're the man thank you. this has been awesome thank you Lucian. yeah man now we're gonna get some food yeah Hang out. oh because you're driving and talking yeah, is that yeah. tough to drive and talk at the same time it's tough it is tough. What if you juggled and drive and then talk at the same time? That would oh be fun. God. So how's this food place? Like Indian food? Oh, it's amazing. It's, it's called Bombay. Do you eat a lot of Indian food and stuff like that? I do. Sweet, man. I'm all about that. Different cultures, different foods. Bombay Royale. Bombay Royale. This looks amazing. Mm. Cool, man.
Wow, this is delicious. Thanks for taking me, man. Round two. I'm still on round one. Sauce is king. My nostrils are on fire. Cheers. Good time. So you know like after you eat Indian food, you have to try this stuff, right? Oh no, I don't eat that stuff. Really? Yeah. It's like the thing though, right? You have to like take a little bit on your hand and then, right? And then you like put it on the tip of your tongue. And apparently it's supposed to not like have like garlic breath or bad breath or huh. uh, spices. Mmm. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh god now i know why you don't eat this so stuff. i don't eat that stuff <laughs> hey, i think it worked though you know i got rid of some of the flavors have some breath mints if you want <laughs> wow that was like hardcore Ooh. oh yeah that was good food man <laughs> northampton massachusetts northampton this is northampton word 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 what's up what's up, what's up oh this is awesome man that's the calvin right here that's like a historic calvin oh right cool here. so this is the place where uh a lot of bands play, yeah? They have a hotel in our team they have like, instead of a ball drop, they have like the ball raises up. Right on. A tavern. Nice. A bank. This place slaughters one cow a week. And so what? You know, you know exactly where you're getting your meat from, Sutter Meats. Do they put the cow in the store? Yeah. You can see the cow, say, hey buddy, <laughs> say <laughs> goodbye to Betsy. That's messed up. <laughs> Are we getting pulled over? Oh, great. Oh, that looks like top. Primo's cuts. It used to be Kevin's haircuts. Oh, what happened to Kevin's? I'm right down the street. <laughs> upgraded. <laughs> he upgraded. Cut it out. Are you kidding me? That's a castle. That's ServiceNet. Uh, that's a company that helps people with like, mental health challenges and like disabilities. It's, oh. it's a really beautiful, that's a cool beautiful castle. organization. They live, yeah. in a, they live in a castle. I used to work for ServiceNet. I used to run their, help to run their fitness center. Nice. I worked there for like two years. What was that like? It was amazing. Like you get to meet so many like really interesting people who like deal with a lot of challenges every day. And uh, you know, it's definitely um, opens your perspectives and broadens your, your horizons about what you actually have as a person. Like your ability to walk or use your hands. Can you or, go more elaborate with that? Any like uh, people that you've met that have kind of changed your your life in a way as an experience oh yeah um there's this one woman that i met who you know she could only really use without support like one side of her body wow um she apparently had a like brain surgery when she was a kid to alleviate like a lot of seizures and she developed a condition called hemiplegia which is like paralysis of the right side of the body hemiplegia hemiplegia like hemisphere like half okay and plegia meaning like um, not being able to like use or work like paralysis uh -huh. and uh, she used to come to the gym and be the most motivating person um we used to play her kelly clarkson and get her pumped up nice and uh nice. yeah That's just awesome, ru running on the treadmill like almost like full clip for like, really a long time and just like constantly like wanting to get better and lifting heavier weights every day and uh by the time i left she actually started to regain the control of the side of the body that was paralyzed. You're she, kidding me. Yeah, she, wow. yeah the, the brain and training, is it, it's, it can do some really interesting things. That is amazing. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, she, she definitely like changed my life. Her and like every other member that I used to help. We used to have a um, adult daycare program that would come in and a service night has a vocational farm program so they really do help people through like teaching them how to work on a farm and giving everybody responsibilities and delegating and it's uh yeah service now is one of the biggest like organizations of that kind in mm -hmm. massachusetts mm -hmm. i think they have like 1200 employees across the state with residential um, communities um, rehab centers they have addiction services they have all sorts of stuff it's wow. uh it was it was probably good for you man yeah good for you right on that's best, awesome i'd high five you but you're driving all right there you go best place i've ever worked on <laughs> that's most, awesome i would say um besides you know just being in the classroom and yeah i wouldn't trade that anything for the world yeah that's one thing about teaching man when you give back it's just such a great feeling sure. yeah teaching you also learn how to learn and you become a better learner as a teacher because you're constantly like having to distill it down into something that is um, a little less complicated. There's a saying I like to use with my students, make the complicated simple, 
and then make the simple complex. And so you can kind of scaffold that experience telling a narrative or a story. My uh, engineering students, um, I think for two years in a row, we tackled um, human, how, do you, how would you engineer human civilization? So we started out with the development of fire technology, worked towards um, fermentation and like hydroponics, so on farming and agriculture. And then finally, um, towards the development of the wheel, I had them disassemble and reassemble a BMX bicycle and then painted and develop uh, decals. And then from there, like you have to think about, well, where did humanity go? So we talk about construction and bridge building and um, finally end the year with aerospace and rocket technology to kind of like get off um, Starship Earth. What? That is rad. Rocket technology. <laughs> You, you take things to a whole different level. You are definitely a scientist, for sure. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. I can see it in the juggling, I can see it in, in the way you talk, and also just uh, so many ideas that you have. I, you know, just crazy ideas, which is great. You know? Where does that come from? Uh, I think it's just human curiosity. I, You've I, always been curious? Yeah, and, and watching Star Trek, actually. I, I oh, so you're a Trekkie. <laughs> you can learn a lot about yourself and the way people should be treated in Star Trek because I mean in the future Star Trek li it lives in a universe where money is not an obstacle anymore people like want to better themselves for the sake of bettering themselves and bettering humanity and it's all about being curious and then being able to investigate that curiosity through meaningful steps you cool. want you want to create goals because if you don't create short-term goals you're not going to get any long-term gains it's like going to the gym same uh, same thing except you're doing it with your mind Why working out why is that a big thing for you why eating healthy and all that stuff when did you get into that well, when I was younger I was in the Boy Scouts and mm -hmm. then I always liked camping and being outside and living in the Pioneer Valley there's so many great places to hike and places to explore waterfalls to chase in a way I, f I feel like being outside is a it's a type of like mental therapy in Japan, there's an idea where you go out into the forest and it's called forest bathing, where the ambiance and the noise has an effect on the central nervous system that you can't get in an artificial environment. Right. And so when you're outside in the sunlight, you're, you're not only improving your mood, but you're also, by extension, improving your body and the way your circulation and your blood pressure is um, regulated. There's, there's a whole... Cool. series of um, changes that happen when you go out into nature that are currently being documented. That, wow, um, man. Yeah, I, I encourage anybody to go outside and just uh, kind of drink it all in. So we're going to go to River Valley Market right now. Okay. And this is uh, definitely a spot that has some really great produce and it's a cooperative. So um, they're for the people, by the people. Awesome. I'm starving. I could totally be driving this, man. Totally. Here we are. River co op. Delay to receiving. Delivery on the dock. Now I gotta buy them. That's how I know I like my apples. I just juggle them, they feel good, I eat them. <laughs> Alright, we got our fruit, we got my bananas, because I love bananas. We got some peaches, I love peaches, and of course, some apples. You gotta have a lot of fruit in your diet when you juggle, that's for sure. You like bananas because they have no bones? Oh, nice. We ever ate a banana without peeling it? Look at that. Try eating the whole thing. With one hand, check it out. I have the whole thing. And then I can put it back on the shelf and no one will know that it's eaten. You know what I mean? <laughs> I feel like I got a good voice, right? The TV voice. Do you do Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. <laughs> The way you you do it in clips, like the the short. Oh, clips. my videos. You like yeah, my videos? Yeah, the videos are good. You watch them, you like them? Yeah. Cool, man. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. You're gonna be part of this clip. You're gonna have your own clip. <laughs> the way you narrate things is kind of like how a child sees a new experience, different every time, and it's like new and exciting. And I think a lot of re the reason why you have so much fun with what you're doing is because you honestly like create a different reality, which is a good reality because it's a, it's, a, it's a better it's a better way of looking at experience as opposed to like just being bored all the time. I like that. I think it's, right, cool. it's, it's a good way of looking at um, the same thing differently and fresh, with fresh eyes. So, I like that. Thank
thank you for sharing with that experience. Thank you for having me get some fresh fruit. Yeah. Check it out, Polish club. Go Polska. That is awesome. What's up everybody? Day two with Dan the man, and we are heading to the mountain. That's right. I'm gonna go hiking. You know, I like eating apples. I like eating the green apples though. I'm a green apple guy. Oh, what are yeah. you red? Uh, I like pink lady apples, I think. Pink I think those apples. are the best ones. Or honey crisp. Oh, honey crisp are good too. Yeah. But I'm a green apple guy. I like to do green apples. I like to have kale and I put it with water in a blender. I fill it up and I uh, blend it okay, and I drink that every morning. That's like my thing. It's a nice safety day. Safety third, safety belt. It is sunny. It is. Oh, there's a. Um, a winery right here. Really? They do like free Sweet. wine tastings from I think December. Oh man, January it's not going on right now. This whole place is beautiful, man. Yeah, it's man. like a. This is historic. It's like a dream. It's like. 17, 16, 17. See this in Orlando. Orlando just flat with a bunch of tolls. Like, everything looks like a golf course because it's super green, super nice. It looks always the same. Every time I fly back home from shows, like everything looks like a golf course. You know what I mean? Did I just you know say that like five times? Sure. <laughs> So basically, when I fly back home, everything looks like a golf course. It's super green, uh, the grass is cut perfect, everything looks perfect. It's like the Truman Show. You know, it's like Pleasantville, you got the uh, palm trees, and nothing changes. And it's been like that for 10 years. Nothing so, changes. So imagine going back home and like nothing really changes. You're like, oh yeah, it's perfect. You know? For me, it kind of drives people crazy. It's like the same thing. Tourists, tourists, tourists. Well, where I'm about to take you, know? you is going to be even prettier than around here. Like this okay. ride is like my, this is how I go to the mountain every day when I go hiking. Nice. Thank you for taking me on your morning journey. Absolutely. I like to hike the mountain, juggle at the top, chat with people, maybe read a book, do some yoga. I don't know, just like invert your perspective. So awesome. So you have a better understanding of like what's going on, terra firma. Um, mansions on the wow. hill. Wow. Yeah, it's real Look nice. That. That sounds, wow, that is a mansion. Holy Dude, this is where it's These at. are farm fields I used to work in. They do all sorts of stuff. Hatfield has like the, it's like the potato empire of New England. Swaz really? Yeah, Swazowski Potato Farm. They uh, they run the show. They're like uh, bringing Idaho to, to the Northeast. Huh. Yeah. Well, I know where to get my potatoes. One thing I like about doing these interviews is that I feel that when people interview I feel like when I interview other people, it's really cool because they can feel comfortable to hang out with me and talk to me and also, you know, be who they want to be, you know? I kind of don't like to like have this thing where, oh yeah, well I juggle and therefore I have to act a certain way because I'm professional and I perform. You know what? Forget that. I do it. I make money. I might not be the greatest juggler, but I make money doing it. I have fun with it and people who are around me like to talk and say whatever they want, you know? It's a way for people to be who they want. Yeah, it's a, it's a way for people to feel maybe more connected to their own lives because a lot of times you can get bored with what you're doing every day and when you interact with people who end up traveling around and kind of making their own luck, making their own, paving their own way in a sense, it enables you and yourself to enable your own path out of a, I don't know, right. maybe like a boring existence. It allowed me to tell you all about like why I like juggling and all the things about my life. It's it it adds a another layer of meaning right i want right. more people to juggle i want more people to go out and enjoy nature I want awesome. more, yeah just like to be authentic with yourself and with others dude this is why i'm doing this i'm doing this because i want to give back you know what i mean i've been performed 15 years and i thought you know what everyone has a story and i want people's stories to be shared and either it's juggling or dancing or playing music you know sometimes people you know live their lives i had a friend of mine he was a circus performer and and he, we had a barbecue and we pretty much did this like uh, party and I uh, had my camera with me and he was talking about his life and I just was videotaping it. And after the end, you know, I said, uh, hey man, can I put this on my YouTube page? I call it What's Up Talent. I'll send it to you. He watched the video and he said, thank you, Lucian. I said, what? He said, for 30 years, no one's asked me what I've done. You know, I've done all these great things, these big shows in Russia and this and that. He was an amazing uh, circuit performer, did a Kyrians, which like flips with their feet, you know, another partner. He did Flatland BMX. And it was just like awesome to have that feeling of this guy appreciated me talking to him. And at the same time, uh, I got to let his story be heard. And it just like made me feel so good to hear that he really appreciated that conversation. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna start having these conversations with more people. Let more people, 
you know, had this exposure and also let their story be told. And to be honest, man, it's been a lot of fun and it's been able to change people's lives. You know, people have come up to me after these interviews and be like, Lucian, thank you, man. Like, I'm so happy to like talk to you. That felt so cool to like say what I was on my mind. I've always wanted to say this. And now I have something on YouTube that can last forever. And you know, if, whatever, if the internet blows up, but you know what I mean? Like it's there, you know, like it's there to share with your friends and family. No one's paying me to do this. I do it because I love it. You know what I mean? And I do all my editing. I do everything. I just leave my own video, you know, it's, yeah. and whenever I don't have shows, I'll find time to like go back and edit the videos and edit the audio and upload it and, you know, and do it myself because that's, I feel like I'm giving back, you know, in a way it's a purpose, a way of, for me to showcase that, Hey, those who don't know about performing now, you know, you know, now you know that this guy lived this life this way, or this guy lived this life this way, or this woman, you know, had this way of performing, you know, everybody has a story and now people have a little bit more understanding and appreciation for what it is to be a true professional performer or a professional person or of, of entertainment or even just a person who loves a certain art form you know like for instance not that many people I know are professionals but they have a skill and a talent that they're really good at and, and in a way that's changed their lives for the best it's made them you know without that they wouldn't be where they are today and it saved their lives in some way too how do you tell me juggling saved their lives believe that yeah? it does and a lot of other things I think flow arts in general put you in a state of mind where you free yourself from your own constraints so it allows you to be creative and those creative adventures end up kind of mixing with other parts of your life so that you, know, you can be creative holistically as opposed to just like in one um, one sector absolutely man. I mean it's been awesome and I'm happy that people feel comfortable to talk to me whatever they want to say you know and it's allowed me to like really work on myself too when I interview people I've known how I talk and who I am as a person and I've also learned their stories man like where they've been or how they train or you know some of the wild events they had during on stage during a show or so forth I'm like man I've shared that same moment or this or that so it's nice to hear that you know when as a juggler I do shows with like a contortionist or chiffon or a hand-to-hand -hand act and a German wheel act but I'm the only juggler on in the show so I don't meet other jugglers right unless I go to festivals or you know do an act with another person or so forth another juggler but that does it's rarely right so it's nice to meet other performers especially jugglers that share the same stories and I'm like yeah I had that happen to me I had this happen to me yeah I know exactly what you're talking mm -hmm. about and then they know a lot of other jugglers that I know you know I know so much about the history of performing and juggling that because I love it and it's been my life but not just that I understand what it's like to be a performer too on stage so it's not like you have to be a juggler you know you can be a dancer or or a bass player you know and it's just it's awesome man it's like everybody loves performing and it's such an amazing experience that everyone has their own story to tell you know and that's just like I don't know I'm kind of getting teary-eyed a little bit well it lasted but you know what I mean like it means a lot to me it means yeah. a lot to me it means a lot to like you know speak from the heart and say what you feel and just say whatever you want it's on your mind you know so thanks for uh, talking to me bro yeah thank you thank you for sharing yeah man that's another thing about traveling, man. You see traveling, and it's like, it's awesome. You just go to different places and drive different places and see the world. You know, you got to get out and travel. See the world, perform, and travel. It's awesome. You know, and if you're good at what you do, you'll always have work. And you'll be able to let juggling or whatever you like to do entertainment-wise, it'll take you around the world. That's one thing I've learned. It's awesome. Very thankful for that. Thankful to meet you, man. You too, yeah. as well. It's been a fun time. Nice. I used to have all these parties. People get married up there. I've seen all sorts of barbecue. They have uh, barbecue up there where you can just like grill your own crap. Nice. Sounds like fun. There it is. It's more like a hill. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Why don't you see the trail? So tell me about some of your crazy experiences hiking. Uh, well, I like to hike barefoot in the summer. Get out of here. Yeah. Hiking without your shoes. Hiking without my shoes. No shoes, no socks, just out in nature just with your feet nature, and your running, toes. This is running around. All right, we made it to the mountain, and uh, you just put your shoes under the car. So you're gonna go barefoot up the mountain. Oh yeah. And you do this most often? Yeah, as much as possible. That's awesome. I think it's really, it's easy on the knees. It's a, it's a different sensory experience. Okay. And it's uh. You know what, hey, listen. I'm gonna try it for a little bit. I'll see how it feels, okay? Go for it. I got my shoes. You might wanna come up here first before we get the process. All right, let's just do it right now. Here we go. All right, here we go. Yeah. All right, we're doing this. No shoes hiking here in Massachusetts. Wow, this is awesome, man. I can feel nature yeah. between my toes. 
<laughs> going into the Shire. Yeah, channeling my inner hobbit right now with our shoes off. So what's the name of this mountain? Mount Sugarloaf. They named it Mount Sugarloaf because early in like early American history, the way they used to package sugar kind of um, was resembled like a loaf. And so they thought that the mountain sort of looked like the same thing. Okay. So it's called Mount Sugarloaf. It also is like based on like an old myth. There's like giant beaver like battled this other creature and it won and it died and it became the mountain. So really? At, yeah, because you look at the front of it, it's got like two humps and like a long sort of tail. Yeah. So it looks like a beaver. Wow. You know what's cooler? <laughs> that we're hiking a mountain with our shoes off. I know. Have you done it before? <laughs> no. Oh, never done it. It's a new new thing for you. I try yeah. to get everybody, convert everybody to the barefoot hiking mentality. Cool, man. Yeah. I'm digging it. Actually, it feels really good. It's like a massage on my feet. Exactly. Yeah. And it's like this path is probably the easiest one to do because there's no rocks. And yeah, I was wondering about that. No nails. No. No, you know, needles. No. This is beautiful. Yeah. Right now, I'm channeling the pain because it feels nice. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes. And you say you run down these hills? Yeah, I did a 4,000 foot mountain race barefoot. Wow. Yeah, I did it in an hour and 20 minutes and just like really ran down hard. It was fun. I, I figured you, of all people, would have done this before. Really? Why? Yeah. Because, I mean, you seem like the kind of guy that probably wants to jump out of an airplane or... I have. Bungee jump off of a hot air balloon. Oh, man, that'd be awesome. Wingsuit fly through like a hole in a mountain. <laughs> like something like that. This yeah, man, like, I've never done the barefoot. This is like cavalier compared to like those other experiences yeah i definitely feel a difference for sure and it does feel like a massage which is really nice it does feel like a massage. you know I mean, we've been in shoes a really like a hardcore deep tissue massage you know? <sighs> it's a great good morning you know it is. great way to start your day man i'm feeling it wow barefoot hiking here we go <laughs> it's my new adventure you know, who cares about juggling five torches on a 10-foot unicycle or knives, clubs, barefoot hiking. Yeah, That's what I'm talking about. Connecting with the earth. Beginning of the season, you're called tenderfoot. End of the season, you basically have dog pads on the bottom of your feet. <laughs> well, one thing I've noticed is that it's good for like your arches and so forth and how you walk, it right? It really is, yeah, because you're, you're transforming like three Gs of force from your heel into like rotational force like through your midfoot. You mm. basically have like a virtual lever that extends through the ground and it increases your mechanical advantage when you walk. Cool. All right, we're doing it now. Hiking now. Look at this. Beautiful. Climb. It's a, it's a really awesome, good, man. It's a really good day to do this today. Oh, yeah. Uh, where'd you get your name? Oh, where'd I get my name from? Yeah. Well, I was named after Luciano Pavarotti, but I'm not Italian. I'm Polish. And I have a twin brother. His name is Lance. And uh, my mom liked Lance a lot, so they had Lance. And my dad liked Luciano, but we took off the O and made it Lucian. And now, my brother's name is Lanson with an N, so it became Lucian. What's up, guys? Hi. And we became Lucian and Lanson. Oh, really? Yeah. So that's how it worked. It's an interesting combination. Right? And Pretty your cool. Your brother's a twin brother, right? Yeah, twin brother. I'm even older. Does he look exactly Identif like you? Identical twins. Well, wow. we looked a lot of like when we were younger, but when we got older, you know, features changed in a way, but sure. we still have a lot of similarities and look alike. People put us next to us, they're like, yeah, you guys are twins. <laughs> Same kind of nose, eyes in a way, you know? What about their hair? Who's got the longer hair? Well, I do, you know? But he's got a beard now. Oh. Yeah. So it's a little different. But yeah, he played drums and I played bass guitar when I was young. We were in band. It's fun times. He juggles a little bit too. Huh. Uh, now we're really hiking. I need a cigarette. <laughs> okay, I don't smoke. All right, cigarettes. <laughs> That's nice one. This is what I run down. Wow. <laughs> You're nuts. People think I'm crazy. You're insane. Holy cow. You yeah, imagine if you got caught in that. Slice your foot right open. So most people wear shoes when they hike this trail. <laughs> we like to do things differently. Yeah. Look at that river. Mm -hmm. This is epic. Life is good. I actually uh, hiked Mount Fuji in Japan, and I did it overnight. Want to hear the good news or the bad news? Uh, bad news. 
Okay, bad news is I hiked the longest trail. It's where like the army hiked, right? Started at 6 p.m. But the good news is I made it to the top and saw the sunrise. And that's what you do. You uh, pretty much start at 6 p.m. and uh, you end 4 a.m. seeing the sunrise, okay? Now throughout that, it gets dark, it gets windy, it gets cold. I was looking like a ninja, had a like, you know, uh, scarf over my face, black scarf, you know, beanie, and uh, I only had peanut butter, right? That's all I took with me, and some water. Made it all the way up with some friends of mine. Halfway through, some of my friends had to go back down because they were getting uh, uh, the sickness, altitude sickness, and we just kept pushing and kept pushing. And at the end, I was like, you know what? Hey guys, I'm gonna go to the top. And I just struggled my way through. I found out there's this huge, like, super steep cliff area. And it's nighttime, you can barely see, all I had is the moonlight, man. And I'm going up there, yeah, it's beautifully dangerous, right? And then I'm going up to the top, and you ring this bell, and it's like the last part of the trail. It's the hardest part. And you see this, like, Tori, right? Which is like, you know, the uh, door doorway to the gods. I see it at the top, I'm like, I gotta make this thing. I climb up to the top, but all I had was this white rope, okay? I hold on to the right-hand side, and that's all I had to, to see because I didn't have my light. My light actually stopped working, right? So I was like, all right, I got to do this, man. I want to make it to the top. So I started holding on to the rope. And as I'm going up to the rope, I noticed that on the other side of the rope is this huge 20 or 30 foot cliff. You know what I mean? Yeah. You just fall right off. So I was like, what the hell am I doing? And then so every four to five minutes, I would take a break and lay down and let the wind blow over me just to kind of relax. But it didn't relax enough because I noticed that my, my uh, camelback was, coming out, was running out of water. So I was like, I gotta get up there, you know? So now I'm getting really dehydrated and really tired. Man, this is like life or death for me. I mean, it's one hell of a freaking uh, hike for me. And I'm going up to the top, and at the end, I notice the, I'm getting closer to the Tory. I get to the top, and I'm like, yes, I finally made it. And then there's a guy up there, and he's like, he's like, hey man, how's it going? I was like, hey, am I at the top? Am I at the summit? He's like, yeah, you made it, man, come on. We're gonna go see the sunrise right now. And I go over there, and I'm like, wait a minute, what trail did you go on? And he's like, yeah, well, there's three other trails. You know, smaller trails that are like an hour long, two hours long. I went on like the six hour trail. Oh, wow. Yeah, right? At night, in the middle of the dark, you know, with like not too much uh, lighting equipment. Were you by yourself? I was, well, at the end I was by myself with the last trail because some of my friends went down. But then when I got to the top, I saw the sunrise. It was amazing. Then later on, I saw a couple of my friends made it too. And they're like bundled up with this like space silver uh, blanket. Yeah, and when they were above the space over blanket, they basically were like freezing. And then within five minutes, I could only enjoy the uh, the the sunrise for like five minutes, or I was starting to get hypothermia. So luckily or not, there's a post office on top of Mount Fuji, right? So I went to the post office to warm up, and there was like a noodle house. Went in there, and I sent my mom a postcard. You know what I mean? It was awesome, and uh, yeah, it was like it was great. Like I sent some friends. Uh, like saw some friends and I was up there and I was basically like just pretty much now feeling warmer then I realized I have to walk back down this whole mountain <laughs> and I have to go back down like like another four or five hours 15 hour hike Mount Fuji now imagine that barefoot no way Jose we did it yeah we did it barefoot <laughs> yeah what's those buildings over there it's UMass yeah UMass Amherst tallest library around here and my alma mater. Cool, man. Do you still know it? Do you still sing it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what the song is. Woo! Yeah! We made it. High five. Made it to the top of the mini mountain. Check that out. Pretty cool, huh? It is pretty incredible. Beautiful. Today is going to be a beautiful day. All right, so uh, as you can see, I hiked up with barefoot. But now, I'm putting my shoes back on. Going down, well, the normal way. But you're gonna still go barefoot. <laughs> yeah. Going to all these different places. And when I went to Mount Fuji, I videotaped that, and I videotaped a lot of my own personal travels. And within that, I actually uh, was able to videotape uh, more of my friends' performers, and that's how What's Up Talent happened. You know, it just was like, after doing shows, we just Lucian got... Fuller, the origin story. Really? Yeah. Lucian Fuller, the origin story. Cool, man. Yeah, the crazy thing is that I've, I've been doing this for about, man, over 15 years of my life, performing and traveling. And it's I have all these great adventures of, of me going places, sometimes by myself with others, and I've always wanted to document it, you know? I like living a fun life and doing fun stuff. I basically said, I want to 
mount, climb Mount Fuji and I videotape that or I videotape, you know, going down, you know, um, on a river or doing busking or doing juggling shows and just, you know, videotape my life. It's, it's fun and I have a good time and I want people to share it, you know, and share their stories on What's Up Talent and share their adventures too. So thanks for taking me on this awesome adventure, man. You're welcome. Yeah. Appreciate it. It's been fun. Check it out. It's a butterfly. Wow, look at it. It's because his wings are blue on the back of him. Oh, wow. It was blue and then it turned to yellow. That was a magical butterfly. <laughs> Swear to God. <laughs> Swear to God. I mean, I know we're high, high as in a mountain. <laughs> but man, that was a magical butterfly. So right now, I have my shoes on. <laughs> and you are running barefoot. Wild. <laughs> yeah! Let's do this! Whoa, what was off road? I'm gonna get you! I'm coming! Woo Whoa! This is insane! Running down a mountain! Always fun in the morning! This is no joke! They should have this as a sport. Running down the mountain barefoot. Those who are watching, sorry about the cheeky camera, but I can't stop. Ah, whoa, that was a rock. <laughs> that was a close one. Yeah, yeah, ow, we did it. All right, we just ran down that mini mountain. You're gonna feel it in the morning. No. Yeah? No. That's in salt? Nothing? No. Just go like that, yeah? Just go throughout the day. Wow. That's awesome, dude. Awesome. Good job. Thanks, man. All right. Time to get some food. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Just finished an awesome hike. Now we're getting some Indian food. Cool. Man, I can smell the curry right oh, now. It's so good. Oh, so good. I'm stoked. Yeah, no, I just wanted to let you know that. It's, what do you want to say? Be, being on video with you has allowed me to kind of live your life in a moment. And it's interesting because like a lot of people don't live extraordinary lives and you make your cool. own extraordinary life. Thanks, man. So thank you. Thank you. You've learned a lot, huh? Oh, definitely. It's like having a master class in performance, like distilling 15 years of experience into like a five day stretch. It's something that I've been like wanting to what do was for it a master while. For you? Learning about the performance world, learning about entertainment world, world. learning yeah, about constructing up, a show, yeah. intention, emotion. We pretty much costume. talked all the time. We never went to sleep. No, no. No. It's so much information that I'm, I'm probably going to use later on if I end up yeah. like going into performance or Dude, entertainment. Dude, thanks. Well. Awesome three days of fun and just like juggling and talking about more juggling and then juggling some more. Yeah, we're all human beings and I think that sometimes people forget that professional performers are more than just like a face on the stage doing something really extraordinary or right. incredible. So it excites you to perform? It does yeah? excite and get, me. And try some new stuff in and your life. And to rub elbows with people who do it. I mean, it's the, the only way that you awesome, can learn man. is through osmosis. Well, I'm happy to motivate you, bro. Yeah, Let's get some you. food. Great, man. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Oh my gosh. Now the smell is... Whoa, yeah. That's that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. This this is good. I can already tell it's gonna be good food. It smells good. It's gonna taste good. It's game eat. time. Time to eat. Bon appetit. Man, this looks good. <sighs> Perfect. Perfect. This is awesome, man. This is good food. Mm -hmm. This is a way to eat, right? Wake up, have some Indian food. That's what I do. Wow. This was a good life. <laughs> You want to try it? You don't do it, right? No, I don't do okay, it. Here we go again. That's yeah, not bad. Better than the other one. Not bad at all. You know what I mean? Ah, I don't understand that, you know? The Indian food is so good. And then you eat these little seeds afterwards to help your breath. But they taste like... Ah. Ooh. It's very strong. All right, high five. That's how you dry your shirt. You just put it on the, the roof of a car like this, it's and it awesome. dries. Yeah, it's pretty dry. Beautiful. Look at that. It's a way to dry your shirts while you're, while you're traveling. A little trick there. A little tricky trick. Thanks for watching, guys. See you guys next time. Peace. Peace. That's the way you end a video. That's how you do it. Dude, thank you, man, yeah. for taking me on this awesome adventure. Absolutely. Wow.
Look at this. I'm above Massachusetts right now. I'm on top of the world. <laughs>